Uh, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through two different ways of creating mockups in Affinity Designer for the iPad. As you can see, I have already started two projects with photos for mockups. I have got these photos from Unsplash. It's one of my favorite sites to get photos for mockups or any other projects I'm working on. I'll leave some links below so you can check it out. This is something I did earlier in the Pixel Persona with the watercolor brush as a way of showing you how to do a mock-up with this. So it's just a plain piece of paper. This will make your designs kind of come to life if you want to show it off on social media. So if you click the document button at the top, and just as a little hint, if you are ever not sure which tool is what, if you click on that question mark, at the bottom, it will pop up with the names of everything. So clicking the document button and then place image, import from cloud. The name of mine was hello. And then click wherever you want your graphic. I'm just going to rotate this and adjust the size. And mine exported with the white background. This is really better if it has the transparent background. But the way I'm doing this, it will still work with a white background. So if you go over to the Layers panel, make sure your graphic is selected, and then click the circle with the three dots. Click on Normal. And you can scroll through this and figure out what works best for you for each image. Most of the time I will use Multiply, it's my go-to. It works really great for almost all mock-ups and it gives it more of a realistic look. So going back out, you can see the white has disappeared. I'm just gonna line this up a little bit more with a pencil. And it is already good to go. All you have to do is export it and then you can upload it to wherever you would like. Going back out, going to the second image. This is really great if you want to show off your patterns and see how they look on clothing. So the way of doing that is using the pen tool. If you zoom in, you just need to make your points around the edge of the shirt. You can kind of move this around after you select your point if you want a curve at all and you can always edit this later on. So I am not perfect when I'm making it the first go around. I always go back and adjust it after I have already put my pattern into it. So zooming out, I have already created an outline for the shirt. So I'm going to turn that second layer off and then turn that first layer on with my curb selected. And then to fill this with your pattern, if you use the fill tool, once again, you can click on the question mark if you need to know which one is which. So with the fill tool, and then the first thing that I like to do is just draw a line inside the shape and it fills it with a gradient. If you go down to the bottom, click on type, and then change this to bitmap, it will open up any patterns that you have saved. So when you first put this in, if you try to adjust the scale, it goes a little wonky. Make sure to always have aspect selected. This way when you scale it, it stays in proportion. And then just like we did last time, if you go into layer and then the layer options, go to multiply. And if I zoom in, you can see the shadow in the shirt still not as realistic as I would like, so I am going to decrease the opacity. So like I was saying, I don't make it super perfect when I'm doing it at first. You can always go in with the node tool and adjust any of your nodes so that it matches up a little bit better. And this is something that you can reuse over and over again. So it's worth putting in that little extra time at the end to make sure it lines up. So all the other times, all you have to do is drop in your pattern. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.